right now taking you live. This is the Lithuania where NATO Chief Jen Stol Jens Stoltenberg can, uh, speaking to reporters after today's NATO leaders meeting. Let's listen to his comments here. Um, Andrew Gray from Reuters, uh, Secretary General, to come back to P President uh, Zelensky's remarks. He said it would be absurd if the time frame is not set neither for invitation nor for Ukraine's membership. Uh, how would you respond to that specific point and why have allies not set out a time frame today? What we have agreed is a very uh, substantive package with many different elements that helps to move Ukraine closer to uh, NATO, uh, help them uh, to move uh, uh, towards NATO membership, uh, and this is partly very practical uh, support on, for instance, interoperability, and uh, reforms, defense sector reforms and interoperability are among the conditions which are important for uh, membership. So that's a practical way of moving them, uh, moving Ukraine uh, closer to, uh, to NATO. Um, um, uh, then we also send a, a strong political message uh, with the language on membership, including the language uh, which is now in the communique on uh, invitation. Uh, so uh, there has never been a stronger message from NATO at any time, both when it comes to the political message uh, on the path forward for membership and the concrete uh, support from NATO allies, military support, but also the practical support on how to ensure uh, full uh, interoperability. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, and if you look at uh, other membership processes, there have not been uh, time uh, 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 lines for those processes. They are conditions-based has always been. Okay, we'll go to the gentleman here in the second row. Lauri Nurmi, Iltalehti from Finland, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, the Baltic Sea becomes NATO's inland sea. NATO puts 300,000 new troops on high readiness. Uh, what does all this mean for frontline countries like Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland? And what is NATO's message to Mr. Putin and Russia. How historic is this moment? Thank you. It is historic that uh, both Finland and uh, Sweden uh, will become uh, members of uh, NATO. Finland is already, already a full member and uh, uh, with the agreement uh, uh, that uh, uh, President Erdogan and uh, Prime Minister Kistersson uh, and I were able to make uh, last uh, night, uh, uh, Sweden has also become a, a full member of the alliance. This is historic. It's important for the whole alliance. It's important for Finland. It's important for, uh, for Sweden. Um, but it is uh, uh, also in particular important for uh, the, uh, the Baltic region, because uh, when you look at the map, you realize that, for instance, uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, the possibility, the ability to reinforce uh, the Baltic region is uh, very much improved by the fact that we now have Finland and, uh, and Sweden, also Sweden, as, as uh, full uh, members. And that will be reflected in our defence plans, in our exercises, in our capability targets and everything else we do as an alliance. So it makes the whole alliance stronger and it makes especially the Baltic region uh, safer. It sends the message that NATO's door is open. It sends the message that it's for NATO allies to decide uh, uh, on enlargement. It's uh, not for Moscow to deny sovereign nation, uh, nations the sovereign right to choose their own path. And this is, uh, again, something we have demonstrated not only in words, but also in deeds by now allowing two new members and sending a message to Ukraine, uh, which is stronger than uh, any message NATO has ever sent before on membership uh, for uh, Ukraine. Um, we have the gentleman over there in the third row. <clears throat> over there. Uh, European Pravda, Ukraine. Uh, uh, Secretary General, I would ask you to clarify a bit on uh, conditions. I understand that you cannot uh, list all of them. It's probably not clear, but maybe you see how these conditions would be defined, agreed, uh, because I, I'm afraid that uh, uh, it would be read that uh, uh, NATO has lifted the uh, membership action plan, uh, but have uh, in the invented uh, another membership action plan with another name, which is conditions. So it's like making a, a bit of uh, a fake achievement. Thank you. 
No, what we say in the communique is that uh, Ukraine has moved uh, beyond uh, the requirements for a membership action plan. Uh, just because uh, Ukraine has come much closer to NATO. I was actually uh, attending the NATO uh, uh, summit in Bucharest in 2008 as a Norwegian Prime Minister, and I remember very well the, the discussion there. And of course, the discussion now is totally different for many reasons, uh, not least because uh, Ukraine is under full-fledged attack uh, by, by, by Russia, but also because Ukraine has come so much closer to this alliance over all these years, because especially since 2014, uh, when NATO allies start to train and equip uh, Ukrainian armed forces, uh, but even more so after, 20, after uh, February uh, last year, uh, uh, Ukraine has demonstrated uh, uh, capabilities, uh, skills, uh, uh, and has been more and more integrated with, uh, with NATO. This is also a consequence of the equipment which uh, NATO allies are delivering because, for instance, uh, when we uh, deliver um, uh, modern battle tanks uh, or um, advanced air defense systems, uh, uh, a consequence of that is also more interoperability, more NATO standards, doctrines, uh, and a gradual uh, uh, movement from the Soviet era, uh, doctrines, standards, and equipment to uh, NATO, just by the fact that uh, so much equipment is now delivered. And, of course, when we start training with uh, um, uh, of training of pilots for F-16s, it will even more add uh, to this important uh, uh, interoperability, which has always been a requirement for uh, NATO uh, membership. So this is this is this is moving uh, Ukraine uh, closer to, uh, uh, to to NATO and to NATO uh, membership, uh, and also reflecting the fact that that NATO has uh, come much closer. We've been listening in as uh, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg uh, kind of outlines what's been discussed at the NATO summit in Lithuania amongst the members, of course, of NATO, uh, including among them, of course, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, discussing uh, not only Ukraine, as you hear Jens Stoltenberg saying, being closer to membership than ever before, but also highlighting the fact that Finland and Sweden are joining, bolstering NATO in the Baltic region.